Please welcome to the Hall of Fame, Chris Paul. All right. Here we go. I guess they say the worst for last. Um, man, what a, what a blessing, uh, honor, and a privilege to be here before you guys and the other in inductees. Um, it's amazing, especially going in with people that do things that I know I can't do. Uh, Mike, I would never run for no reason, <laughs> right? Swank, I can't kick, I can't kick. Riley, I played quarterback in high school, but we won't talk about that. Um, Coach uh, Daly, unbelievable. Every time I saw you on campus, it was like a big deal. I always wanted to get a picture with you, so I got one tonight, so I appreciate it. I just wish you had a visor. You always had a visor on when I seen you on campus. And then uh, Drew, you know I ain't messing with that water. That's out, that's out. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this, is, this is home. You know, for me, a lot of people tell their stories of Wake Forest University, but for me, this is home. I mean, I had my high school graduation right here, <laughs> right here. I played a lot of my high school games right here. And so for me, um, it was bigger than just coming to Wake Forest University. Uh, I wish he was here. I don't think he's here, but Josh Howard. Y'all know that name? Josh Howard is, is the originator, you know, the guy from Winston-Salem that decided to stay home. And I think that meant a lot to me when I was being recruited. When I was being recruited, I'm a lot like Mike said, I wasn't this phenom. I wasn't this phenom. I was a small kid right down the street in Louisville. Uh, my homie Danielle that's over there, we played Pop Warner football together since we was four years old, right? And so I just loved football. I was always a small kid. I played two years of varsity football and two years of JV basketball. That don't make a lot of sense, do it? You know? But I just always had a lot of drive about me, a lot of drive and a lot of hard work. And I always had a praying family. And I'll, I'll come to my family at the end. But first, I'll talk about my Wake Forest family. Shout out to Miss Puckett, too, who was my Spanish teacher. You know, that was my Spanish teacher, too. And just hearing Swank and Riley them up here talk, I was just getting goosebumps, man. I left Wake in 05 and decided to go to the NBA. But those years that they talking about was my first few years in the NBA when I used to come home a lot more often. And I used to be at them games screaming for y'all, <laughs> watching Swank in the game, man. So to see y'all brings it all back full circle to me. So thank y'all for all that y'all do. Um, when it comes to the Wake Forest family, Mr. Wellman, and um, everybody giving me the opportunity to go to school here, uh, growing up here, um, I didn't know too much about Wake. I knew it was here. <laughs> There's all these trees and all the nice stuff, but you know, it's security. You can't just pull on campus, <laughs> you know? And so uh, having the opportunity to go here, and then I'll talk about my teammates here for a second. My boy, Justin Gray, who's here. Um, man, we got so tight, so tight. A lot of people don't know, I committed to go to Wake Forest as a junior in high school. As a junior in high school, I said I wanna go to Wake Forest University. I used to come over to campus, go to practice, I was, wherever Jay Gray went, I went. I was in high school going to watch them guys practice day in and day out. Got a chance to know Miss Heflin early, right? And one of the most impactful things that ever happened in my life was my senior year when my grandfather was murdered. I'm at my grandfather's funeral with all my family, and guess who comes walking in the door? The entire Wake Forest basketball team. The entire Wake Forest basketball team and coaching staff showed up at my grandfather's funeral. That meant more to me than anything. That meant more than a box out or a rebound or anything. It showed that we, that we really were a family, right? And so then I get here to wake. Well, first, before I got here to wake, any of y'all remember Darius Sangala? Yeah, I was in high school, and I used to come over here and play pickup with them, and they would just pick on me because I was this little kid. Darius would Debo the games. He would miss a shot and say that it was his ball and somebody fouled him. I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. But couldn't nobody say nothing because that was Darius, right? And so you fast forward and you get to the NBA, I mean, you get into college, and we go into practice. We out there on the track running, and I get a chance to see what hard work looks like. And it's a guy on my team named Teron Downey. When I was in high school, guys used to miss shots. We played pickup games to 11, and it felt like it took forever. When you get to college, they don't miss too often. <laughs> Jay Gray didn't miss, Teron Downey didn't miss. And I'll tell you guys one quick story right here about my freshman year. I came into Wake and they had won the ACC championship the day before, I mean the year before. Teron Downey was a starting point guard. I was a McDonald's All-American, everybody knew me, I was happy to come here to school, but I wasn't supposed to be the starting point guard. Teron Downey had to have an uh, appendectomy, right? A 
a week and a half or so before our first game against Memphis. So Coach Prosser put me in the starting lineup. Teron came back to practice a couple days before our first game. And I was like, man, what coach gonna do? This Teron team, <laughs> this Teron team, what coach gonna do? Coach let me start that first game against Memphis and we won and the rest is history, right? So you think about how God works in mysterious ways. Who knows what would have happened if that didn't happen to Teron? It took a lot of hard work, but the thing that it showed me was that Teron, day in and day out, he showed me how to work. He showed me how to work. He was always in the gym, always shooting, and he never said anything about, bad about me, about me having a starting position. So it really taught me about sacrifice. All right, so all my days here at Wake Forest, I want to say a big shout out to all my teammates, to all my teammates. It's some of the greatest memories I had in my life, and to think now, that was 16 years ago, and I still get a chance to play this game that I love. And it's because those guys taught me about hard work. College was way harder than the NBA, just in case y'all wonder. <laughs> you know, Jay Gray, no, he know, man. Preseason conditioning, that was one of the reasons why I went to the NBA. Because it was, it was hard. It was hard. And what I'll say about my coaches, Jeff Battle, Chris Mack, Pat Kelsey, and Coach Prosser, Coach Skip Prosser, who passed away my second year in the league, is one of the hardest things I had to deal with. When you leave home away from your parents, coaches take on a huge responsibility, right? They sort of teach you how to be a man. Coach Prosser taught me how to be a man. He taught me about responsibility. If I played 87 games when I was here at Wake, I only started 86. Not only, but I started 86, <laughs> right? It was one game I didn't start in my college career, right? And that was because I was late to the bus. I was late to the bus, one minute late to the bus, and coach didn't start me against Temple. I don't think I've been late to a meeting since since because it teaches you about responsibility and it teaches you that your time is not more valuable than others. Coach Prosser never gave me any special treatment. The teachers here at Wake never gave me any special treatment and I appreciate them for that. We played a game at Virginia my sophomore year and we used to bus to Virginia instead of flying. They might fly now. School got a lot of money over here. <laughs> they might fly now but we bus to Virginia. On the way back from Virginia I had a paper due the next day. I'm up after the game typing my paper but that's how it was here at Wake. You weren't just coming here to be a great athlete, you were coming here to be a student too. So I'm grateful for that. To my family, to my wife, who I love unbelievably. We started dating my freshman year here in college. Man, at that Ramada Inn, when we had to move off campus. Yeah, it was a lot of drives to UNC Charlotte and back, but she really taught me about sacrifice and what it means to love somebody more than you love yourself. To my kids, who don't always get an opportunity to see things like this, I'm grateful for them, for my immediate family and everybody. Before I get to my, my parents and my brother, I wanna talk about my family, right? My cousins, my uncles, my aunts, all that. Some people don't know what it feels like to just sort of be protected. Just sort of be protected. When I played in high school at West Forsyth, Every game I had, my mom and them would be over here in the stands, but guess what? Most of my cousins and whatnot who didn't play by, about me, they sat right over here by the door. <laughs> they sat and they just always there. They always there, just making sure you're good, making sure you're good. And my family been like that then, and they still like that now. So I wanna say a big thank you to all my cousins, my uncles, my aunts, because when I say they don't play about me and my family, they don't, they don't. And there's no, there's no type of, words or whatnot that you can express for that. Uh, to, to my brother, my big brother, my older brother, CJ, uh, everybody know that's my role, dog. That's, my brother is my, my partner, my business partner since day one. Um, I'm not here without him. All the fights we had in the backyard growing up, all the butt whoopings we got from your mommy and daddy because of us growing up. I think one of my most memorable uh, experience here at Wake was my sophomore year. We got a chance to play my brother's school in a preseason game. Beat them 102 to 57. <laughs> Beat the brakes off of them, you know? But, but it was such an amazing feeling for all of my family, all of my family. We got a chance to play against each other. I was a sophomore, my brother was a senior, and he's always been there for me ever since, ever since, even before that. But even now, if y'all watching one of the games, that's him about to get ejected by one of the refs. <laughs> Anybody get ejected during the game, that's probably my brother. And to my parents, to my mom and my dad, um, they just consistent, like you were saying, Riley. Consistent, always been the same. My folks always been the same. They still here in Winston, always. 
always been at my games. It's always been my normal. I'm going into my 17th season in the NBA, 82 games a year, and my parents still make ha more than half of my games, right? More than half of my games. They don't live in my NBA city. That's just my normal. You know, that's my normal, that after a game, I see my parents. They've always been there, and they continue to be there, and I'm grateful for that. My parents missed one game in my entire college career, and that was when we played at NC State. That's why I was laughing. <laughs> my sophomore year, I got in trouble. We, that's neither here nor there. We'll talk about that some other time. But that's the one game my parents didn't make in my entire college career, because it was my brother's senior night, right? So I've been so fortunate to have unbelievable teammates, coaches, family, and friends over these years, and there's been huge lessons that I've learned. I got a chance to learn, and I'm continuing to learn. And one thing that I, I, I'll wrap up and I, I'll end with this is that I learned that um, success does not equal happiness, right? I think happiness equals success, right? So you can have all the money, all this different type stuff in the world, but if you're not happy with yourself and happy with your family, then it all means nothing, all right? So thank you all so much for this. I'm honored and privileged, and go Deeks.